Guizhou. The President, please be seated. The court is now back in session. Court officer is now instructed to call in with uh, rather civil party TCCP105 into the courtroom. Counsel for Mr. Ian Sari, you may proceed. Counsel Ang Uddam. Mr. President, uh, perhaps uh, we have skipped uh, part of the proceedings in which uh, parties are allowed to make uh, any observation concerning the comments uh, by the civil party laughing uh, he or she has made. Uh, court officer is now instructed indeed to hold on uh, bringing the civil party into the courtroom as a counsel uh, perhaps uh, have some observations concerning the testimonies uh, by civil party TCCP82. Now the chamber would like to give the floor to parties who would wish to make any observation concerning the statement made by Mr. Misaran. Council Angodam. I thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. President and Your Honours. I would not wish uh, to touch upon straightforward to the statement made by Mr. Misaran concerning his suffering, but I wish to make uh, some observations concerning the uh, proceedings, and I may have a few questions and a suggestion. The President, I believe that uh, it is not uh, the opportunity for parties uh, to do that, and it uh, indeed, the floor is now given to parties to make uh, any uh, make observations concerning the statement of suffering by the civil party. Chamber would not uh, wish uh, to hand over to councils uh, for any other purposes other than the one I just indicated. Council. I thank you, Mr. President. I would not uh, stray away from or may not uh, touch issues uh, apart from the relevant matter before us. I have noted briefly uh, that uh, this witness, rather this civil party, talked about the facts that are not relevant to the segment of the trial and the parties who were putting questions uh, were not cut off. The President, uh, indeed it w was part of the proceedings. Uh, your comment uh, is not relevant to the statement of suffering by the civil party. You are a party to the proceedings. If you noted uh, the irregularity during such a proceedings, you were entitled to be on your feet uh, to take issue with that. The Criminal Procedural Court of Cambodia allows such uh, opportunity for counsel to do that during the time when such uh, Irre irrelevant questions uh, were being put to the civil party. We already heard uh, Mr. Misaran concerning his statement of suffering, and the opportunity for counsels this moment is for the observation concerning the content of the statement, not the procedures or proceedings. Counsel. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I would not wish to have any observation concerning the statement, but I do wish to make some observations concerning the procedures, but I would uh, defer uh, to a later date uh, to put this. The President, uh, 
code officer is now instructed to bring in the silver party. The President, the Chamber wishes to inform the parties to the proceeding and the public that uh, we received uh, document E237-1 of Mr. Yang Sari. Mr. Yang Sari has uh, waived his right uh, to be present during the proceedings. Uh, when the chamber is hearing the testimonies of some witnesses and certain civil parties, including TCCP105. And Mr. Ying Sri has waived his right because uh, of his uh, health concerns. The chamber, therefore, now here the testimonies of civil party TCCP105 without the presence of Mr. Ying Sari pursuant to Internal Rules 81, subparagraph 5. Madam Civil Party, what is your name? Response. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Your Honours, and good afternoon, everyone. I am 50 years old. I live in Kandal Province, Kandal, uh, Kandal District. The President, uh, may we know your name, please? Response, I am Auri. Mr. President. The President, uh, thank you. You already stated your age and where you live. Where were you born? Response, I was uh, born in Tabong Damray. Commune, or rather village, Kampung uh, Chamlong Commune. Question, in which province is that? Response, Ksak Kandal District, Kandal Province. Question, so you were born at the same place as your current resident, is that correct? Response, yes, it is, Your Honor. Question, what do you do for a living? Response, I am a farmer. Question, what is your father's name? Response, he is Ao. The President, Madame Civil Party, please hold on, wait until... Wait until you see the red light on the mic uh, before you proceed to respond to the questions. What is your mother's name? Response. She is Pat. Question. Are you married? Response, yes, I am. 
response. What is your husband's name and how many children do you have? Response. His name is Hun Mao. We have four children. The President. Thank you. Madame Auri, during the proceedings where your testimonies will be heard, as a civil party, you have the rights to express your suffering and the injuries you have suffered physically and mentally, the harms that have been resulted from the crimes as allegedly committed relevant to this case, and you will be given the floor to express such suffering at the end of the session of your testimonies. You may be reminded that uh, you indeed enjoy this right, uh, and you will be given the opportunity to voice your suffering accordingly. The Chamber wishes to also inform the civil parties uh, that according to Rule 91 bis of the internal rules of the ECCC, Legal lawyers for the civil party will be offered the opportunity first to pose questions to the civil party. And please be reminded that legal lawyers and the co-prosecutors have half day of questioning time. You may proceed. Merci, Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, on behalf of our team, it is uh, Councillor Tisrina who will put questions uh, to the civil party. The President, uh, thank you. Council Tisrina, you may now proceed. Council Tisrina. I thank you very much indeed, Mr. President. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honours. And uh, very good afternoon to you, Madam Auri. I have a few questions to pose to you. And uh, before proceeding to putting the questions, I would like uh, to ask you a question concerning the event uh, when the Khmer Rouge uh, captured Phnom Penh. Where did you and your family live uh, during the Lono regime? Response. I and my family lived in Phnom Penh. Question. Where was your house? located uh, in Phnom Penh at that time? Response. It was located at Kilo number six. Question. How many people were there in your family? Response. There were 11 people. Question. How many siblings do you have? Please uh, tell the chamber among the 11 people who were they. Response. There were, there were 11 people, including my younger siblings, my parents. Question. What did your parents do for a living at that time? Response. They sold beef at the market. Question. 
question. Can you please tell the chamber about your um, level uh, of livelihood? Response, uh, at that time, we had enough to eat. Question. Before the Khmer Rouge uh, attacked Phnom Penh, two or three months before the event, had you heard anything about this attack? For example, have, had you ha heard uh, bombs uh, being dropped or gunfire? Response, I heard mortar shells that were dropped uh, into Phnom Penh and uh, we had to take refuge in a bunker. And on one occasion, my sister who sat next to a window got hit by the shrapnel from a bomb that was dropped far from my house but uh, she got hit uh, seriously and several of my neighbors uh, died uh, because of the bomb I saw this after the bomb was dropped, or uh, uh, th it was quiet after no more fighting. We brought uh, my injured uh, sister to the hospital at uh, the main hospital in Phnom Penh. I had to be there accompanying my sister when she was being treated at the hospital. One month later, my mother asked uh, me to bring back uh, my sister because uh, she felt that the country was in big trouble uh, due to the fact that there were bombs being dropped uh, every day. My sister was not yet uh, fully recovered. Uh, she had to be assisted uh, to walk home. A few days later, we saw some Khmer Rouge soldiers who already approached uh, Phnom Penh. And my house uh, was also uh, be uh, visited, uh, was also visited uh, by the Khmer Rouge soldiers. Uh, they came to us asking us to leave the capital city for three days. We were advised not to bring with us any belongings because it was a brief uh, moment to leave the city. Question. Uh, I apologize uh, to interrupt uh, you a little bit. I learned that uh, you talked something important which I wish to f have a follow-up question before you forget. Uh, on one occasion, you said that uh, there was a bomb dropped near your home and that your sister was seriously injured. Uh, can you please tell the chamber your sister's condition? Response. When she got hit, uh, she fell onto the ground and uh, the, the bomb was uh, launched uh, from a nearby location and we at that time thought that our sister could have already been killed by the bomb but she was only seriously injured. Question. You said uh, that uh, your sister was accompanied to a main hospital. Do you still remember the name of that hospital? 
response. They called the hospital in Khmer Bad Thom. Oh, the big hospital, literally. And uh, I noted uh, that uh, a lot of people were wounded uh, and being admitted to the hospitals. Uh, they got injured uh, by the bombs. Question. Were there still doctors or medical staff uh, on duty when your sister was being treated? Response, yes, they were, but uh, only had we been able to offer the medical staff some money would uh, our injured uh, siblings uh, be treated. And uh, without money, we would not uh, uh, get them cured or treated. Question. I have another follow-up question concerning the bomb dropped uh, near your home and that your home was affected uh, by the bomb and your sister was injured. Uh, who else was injured during the, uh, by the bomb? Response, yes, uh, my neighbor, a, an elderly person who was sitting and reading newspaper was killed instantly by the bomb. Question, can you tell the chamber please about your feeling, how you felt at that time. Response, we were terrified. Everyone was scared. We had to take refuge in a trench or bunker every time we heard the bomb being uh, dropped. Uh, question were a lot of people killed response i don't know what happened uh, far uh, further from my home i was uh, confined to the location where i lived and i only saw a few people uh, got injured or killed question Uh, when did you learn that uh, your mother or your sister returned? How long had you been at home before the Khmer Rouge captured the city completely? Response. I had uh, been at home for three days only after my sister was uh, discharged uh, from the hospital before the Khmer Rouge uh, took control of the city. Question. During the day when the Khmer Rouge uh, up, uh, entered uh, Phnom Penh, do you still remember from which direction the Khmer Rouge soldiers came to capture Phnom Penh? If you still recollect uh, the event, you may. If you not, uh, you don't remember, just say so. Response, yes, I can recall that. Three days after the Khmerus entered, we were herded and asked to leave. So people went to different directions. As for my family, we headed to my grandmother's village council 
Subhapati, please listen to my question carefully. On the day the Khmerus attacked Phnom Penh, in which direction did they enter the nearby your house? Response. They came through Prey Apno. Question. Those Khmerus who entered, how many of them altogether, if you can recall? Response, no, I cannot, but there were lines of those soldiers. But I cannot tell you the exact numbers of those soldiers. Thank you. Question. Those soldiers who walked in line, what were they look like? Response, they wore black pants and a black shirt. They have a car tie thongs and they have a scarf on their uh, neck, around their neck. Question, what other activities did they engage in besides walking in line toward the Phnom Penh? Response, they walked in line and others did not walk in line but they went to chase the people to leave the houses. There was an announcement on the mobile loudspeaker announcing that the people the Phnom Penh residents hate to leave because they prepared to clean the city. Question, when those Khmeru soldiers, as you stated, walking in line, and that uh, some of them went into the villages to ask the people to leave, did they tell the people verbally or did they carry any gun at the time? Response, they carried uh, guns and they used the guns to chase away the people that threatened to kill anyone who did not want to leave and that we all had to leave uh, during the night, or overnight rather. Question, did all the people agree to leave or were there anyone who refused to leave? Response, they left. Of course, some other who did not want to leave because they were afraid of losing their belongings that they would leave behind in their houses. And they said that nobody would touch your property and that we had to leave, and that we only had to leave for three days and we could return to our property. Of course, uh, my family, as the rest of other families, did not want to leave because we did not want to leave our property behind. Question. When you left your house as instructed, were other people also living together with your family members? Response. There were many people living together. It was crowded. Other family members also left. They went uh, in various directions, probably towards their native villages. As for my family, we had to cross uh, the river at the Prague Leap. And when we reached the other side of the river, we gave the money to them for crossing the river. And myself and some of my younger siblings were hungry and we wanted to buy something to eat, but we were told that the money would not be accepted anymore. Question. You said that you brought the money along and you wanted to buy something to eat, but then the money was no longer circulated. Can you recall who actually told you that the money would no longer be used? Response, I did not know uh, who actually said that, but I went to buy something from the uh, Khmer Chinese and 
the seller refused to accept the money. And that happens to the rest of other buyers as well. Question. Besides bringing the money along with you, were your family members allowed to bring necessary utility with you? For example, rice, cooking utensils, were you allowed to bring those? Response, they told us it was not necessary for us to bring those utensils and that we could afford to buy stuff along the way and it would be just a heavy stuff for us to bring along as we had to leave only for three days. So we actually left without bringing anything and my mother only just delivered the, the baby and my elder sibling was unwell. So we did not actually bring anything except the money. Question. When, there was a, when it was announced that money was no longer used, what was your mother's feeling and your feeling? Because at that time, your family did not have anything but the money. Response. Her feeling was that if money was not accepted, how could I afford to buy things for my children? They were pretty young. My siblings were young, I was young as well, and we cried out of hunger. Question, when your family members were hungry, were any of the Khmer Rouge soldiers or any of the, the, the Khmer Rouge themselves give you any food? Response, none. Nobody gave us anything. We kept walking until we reached our native village. We took the shortcut, but we still could not manage to get to the village, so we had to stop halfway, and we slept uh, in the, near the lake, we were bitten by mos mosquitoes, and my younger siblings uh, cried because they were hungry. And my mother said, please be patient, uh, children, until we reach our native village. Question, how many days did your family spend before reaching the village? Response, we spent one day and one night before we reached our village. And as I said, during the night, we slept in the middle of the forest. There was no villagers' houses because we thought that we would reach the village by taking the shortcut. But we did not accomplish that, so we stopped halfway. And of course, we slept on the ground and we were swarmed by mosquitoes. Question, at that time, was there only your family or were there other family members as well? And if so, what were their conditions? Response, their family, other families were in the same situation as mine. Those families who had young children, the children cried because they were hungry. They had children, they, they had money, but the money could not be used to buy food. And my parents were shocked by that as well. 
question. Let me confirm with you. On the day that your family was evacuated from your house, Why did your parents decide to leave? Response, because we were not allowed to stay. They chased us away from the house. They did not give us the reason for that. Thank you. You stated that you traveled for one day and one night before you reached your native village. Can you tell us your, where was your native village? Response, it was at Tbong Damrai village at Kampong Machamlong commune. Questioned upon arrival at that village, where did you stay? Was you welcomed by the people in that village? Response. When we arrived at our native village, our grandparents greeted us and gave us food. So we stayed with them for a few days. And later on, Ong Ka instructed my mother to go to live in another house that we hate to build, that house. Question. What was the situation back in that native village were people classified into the best people and the newcomers or were they just uh, not classified into various uh, classes response we were newcomers and we were not allowed to mix with the best people we the new we the Phnom Penh people were considered the newcomers Question. In your native village, was it a Khmer Rouge liberated zone? Or was it at the time under the control of the Lunola regime? Response. My village was already under the control of the Khmer Rouge. Questioned. So, does it mean that they already classified people into various uh, classes, for example, the best people and the new people? Response, yes. Questioned, what about your family who just arrived? at your native village, was your family considered best uh, people or new people? Response, my family was considered new people. Question, then did you know the reason why your family was considered new people and not best people? Response, they said that whoever came from Phnom Penh was considered new people. And that happens to all the families coming from Phnom Penh. Question, were there any statistics made for new families who arrived at that village? Response, yes, indeed new people were registered in a separate list. 
question. Who actually made the list uh, for your family? Response. It was the unit chief. I was not familiar with the structure, but that's what I heard. I was pretty young back then. Question. After your family stayed in your native village for two to three days, did you ever hear an announcement appealing for people to return to Phnom Penh? Response, no. I did not hear any such announcement. My family stayed there and thought that we would be living in peace. Question. Did your families or you yourself ever in wish that you would be returned to Phnom Penh after living there for a few days? Response, of course, we eagerly wanted to return as we left our property behind at our house in Phnom Penh. And when we arrived at our native village, there was nothing else for us there. There was insufficient food. Question. In your native village, was there a food ration for the best people or for the new people? Or did you all eat communally? Response. I did not stay for long in my native village. Then we were sent further. Question. Allow me to refresh my question. Regarding the food ration that you were given after you were allowed, you were asked to live separately from your grandparents' house. Were you given food? And who actually gave you the food ration? Response. It was the unit chief. He gave us the food ration. And my mother was instructed to work to chase away the sparrows from the rice field, and my elder siblings were also instructed to do the same. Question, was the food ration sufficient? Response. The ration has to be shared amongst ourselves. Each of us received three ladles of food, and later on, only one ladle of food was given to each of us. Question. By then, were you asked to eat communally or you ate privately? Response. A few days that we lived there, we ate communally. Question. Did you live in your native village until the fall of the Pol Pot regime? Response. I stayed in that village for a short period of time. Then my family, as well as other families, were ordered to leave. Initially, we thought that upon arrival at our native village that we would be reunited with our family members. 
but on the contrary, Onka sent us further from our, our native village. Question. Did you know where your family was sent to? Response. I knew it very clearly back then. We kept walking and walking until we reached Pratamet. Then we were received by a boat. Question. Did your parents ask where you would be sent to? Response. They did. They, di they did ask where we were sending, where we were sent to, and they said that there was no need for us to ask the question. We just needed to board the boat, and we would be taken to the destination. Question. Did you know the reason your family was uh, sent further from your native village? Response. They said that uh, new people, as we were new people, we had to leave. We were not allowed to settle in the native village. We would be sent to the further areas. Question. So was there a uh, discrimination or the differentiation between the old, the best people and the new people? Response, yes, indeed. Only the new people were sent away. The best people remained. Question, you said that a boat was waiting for your family. How many boats all together? Response. There were several boats. I could not recall the exact uh, number, and each boat was uh, fully loaded. Question How big was the boat? Response It was uh, pretty big. Because once we boarded the boat, we saw a lot of other people already there. Question. My next qu my question is related to the time that you were on the river bank uh, before you boarded the boat. Were you guarded back then on the river bank? Response. Yes. I saw armed guards. They were armed militia, and they instructed us to go onto the boat. And upon seeing the guns, we were afraid, so we hurried ourselves onto the boat. As we saw, other families were harassed by those armed militia. Question, you said that other family members were threatened and did you know the reasons why they were threatened? Response, because they did not want to leave the village. They wanted to stay in the village in the hope that they would be allowed to return to Phnom Penh. Question, upon boarding the boat, Can you tell the chamber the situation on board the boat? Response, of course I can do that. When I got on board the boat, the boat was then covered, so it was in a complete darkness. We did not know which direction the boat was heading to. Question, were your family members or other family members giving food? Response, only after we got off the boat, 
Then we bought it a truck. By then, my family members and other people were given a bread each, but it was not sufficient for us. Question: While you were on the boat, were there guards on the boat? If so, how many? Response. There were two guards at the front and two at the rear of the boat. They were all armed. Question: Did you know the reason for having the armed guards on the boat? Response: They were afraid that the people would flee or would jump out of the boat. But nobody dared to flee. Question: Did you know toward Dyson the boat was carrying your family members and other people? Response: It was heading toward Prague Pnew. I thought that they would put us on a truck and take us to Phnom Penh, but instead we were taken by the truck to Pusat and Badambong. Question: Upon arrival at Prague Pnew, were you received by any other group of people? Response: A truck was waiting for us. Questions: Beside a truck, did you see any nearby villagers near Prajpano coming to to see us, to greet us, or to lend a hand uh, to you or your or other people getting off the boat? Response: No, there was none. There were only tracks waiting for us. Question: Were there guards on the river bank upon your arrival? Response: Yes, there were guards. Once the boat anchored at the river bank, there were guards there, and we were instructed to board a truck. And once a a truck Was loaded that 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 truck left and people would board another truck. Question: Can you describe the particular of the uh, truck if you can recall? Response: It was a cage truck and we all stood. There was no place for us to sit on the truck. Question: You said that you were given a bread. Who actually gave you the bread? That is for you and for your family members and other people. Response: I did not know. I only knew that uh, it was the unit chief who would give us the bread, but I did not know that person. Question: Can you tell the chamber when people got on the boat? Were there many people getting on the boat, or only your family got on the boat? Response: There were many people, not just my family members. Other families also got on the boat. We were, we got up. We were like a flock of people. Question: As to the distribution of bread uh, to the passengers on the boat, were other uh, were other 
materials distributed to your family members? Are you response? No, there was no any other things distributed to us other than a bread for each. Question. You said that uh, trucks uh, were poised uh, to receive you. How many trucks were there when you got to the place? Response. There were a lot of trucks. I don't remember exactly how many, but there were a lot of trucks, a lot of people, because every time a vessel docking the bank, the, the, the dock, uh, uh, the ferry place, then the trucks would come to uh, transport them. Question, what was uh, your recollection of the facial impression of those people, the passengers, I mean? Response, people were reluctant to be loaded onto the tracks because they were wanting to return to the city, to Phnom Penh. They did not want to leave behind their belongings, but they were compelled to leave. And people who uh, contested uh, would uh, end up being in big danger. Question, is it true that people were forced uh, to get on the tracks? Response, uh, it is true that the chiefs of the units and the Khmer Rouge soldiers who were ready to uh, compel everyone to force uh, to be on to, to get on the tracks question how could uh, you believe that uh, these people who forced uh, people to be on the tracks were Khmeru soldiers or head of the units response they were Khmeru soldiers who mingled uh, with the head of the units. Uh, these people would be there to ask us to get on the bus, uh, the tracks. Question. How were they dressed? How were these people dressed up? For example, the soldiers and the unit chiefs. Response. They wore the same outfits, the black shirts and pants with the sandals made of the car tire. And soldiers would be armed when the unit chips would not uh, be armed. Question. People who were uh, transported through the vessels or boats, were they made uh, to wear the same outfits or clothes as uh, the soldiers and the village uh, unit chiefs? Response. My family and I still wore the same clothes. We were not given the black clothes as yet. The president uh, intervenes. Uh, thank you, council, for the civil parties, and thank you, civil party. It is now appropriate time for today adjournment. The chamber will adjourn as of now, and the next session will be resumed by tomorrow at 9 a.m. For tomorrow's session, we will commence by Continuing hearing your testimonies, Madam Civil Party, and uh, Madam Auri, please be informed that uh, your testimony has not yet been concluded and that uh, you are required to come to the chamber again tomorrow. Court officer is now instructed to assist uh, with the vessel unit uh, to ensure that the civil party is uh, 
properly accommodated uh, and that uh, she is returned to the courtroom by uh, 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, the 23rd of November 2012. Security personnel are now instructed to bring Mr. Noon Chi and Kyo Sum Pon back uh, to the detention center and have them return to the courtroom tomorrow before 9 a.m. The court is adjourned. Some ground,